Hi again, everybody. Let's start today's lesson with a question. When light travels from one medium to another and changes speed in doing so, we call the process A, reflection, B, interference, C, dispersion, D, refraction. If you read the title of today's lesson, I think you kind of know the answer. The answer is refraction. Um, let's go through some of these vocabulary terms uh, while the opportunity presents itself. Uh, reflection takes place when light hits uh, a mirror, okay? Flat mirror, curved mirror, doesn't matter. The law of reflection kicks in. Um, bouncing of light, okay, in this context. Interference takes place with light. It can happen with anything uh, that's a wave. It could be sound waves or anything. But with light, interference is possible as well. And this takes place when light rays, light waves are at the same place at the same time. Uh, you can get superposition, constructive, destructive interference. Uh, you can get standing waves and really cool um, special cases of, of interference with light, uh, just like you can with other kinds of waves. Uh, that's definitely not what we're looking for in this particular question. Uh, dispersion is a tempting uh, term. And uh, dispersion really has to do with um, when white light is kind of distributed into its component frequencies, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, uh, that's sort of the dispersion of light. Uh, that might sort of uh, kind of relate to the bending of light, but that's not exactly what we're looking for here. We're just looking for the bending of light, refraction. That's, what, uh, that's what's going to take place here um, in today's lesson. Let's take a look at some, some pictures. Uh, this is a really cool picture. You can see the light is coming in. Uh, we're in the air, okay? When the light hits the glass, it bends. And then when it goes back into the air, it bends again. And uh, this is uh, reminiscent of an experiment that we do in physics. And uh, I think that's a really nice example uh, demonstrating the principle. Here's a couple uh, of other pictures. Uh, we've all seen this before where a spoon or a, you know something in the water appears to be broken when we know it really isn't. Uh, this has to do with uh, the white light that's in this room is going to hit this, this spoon. Some of the light is absorbed, some of the light is reflected, and those visible light frequencies that are re reflected off the spoon are going to go from the water uh, into the air. I suppose there's a little piece of glass in the mix there, but that's going to cause that, um, that bending of light, which causes this, this illusion of the, the spoon being broken. Uh, here's another example. This is a laser light getting uh, refracted here. Uh, this is, uh, I guess this is dispersion, but you can kind of see what's happening is uh, at a more fundamental level, you get a bending of the light, and uh, that actually is why a prism uh, can do what it does to white light. Okay, let's go to the next slide. When light bends uh, in going from one medium to another, we call this process refraction. And what I want you to notice from this picture is the angle of incidence is relative to the normal line. We saw this before when we looked at the law of reflection. Um, we don't really need to know the, I mean, we could figure it out mathematically, but we don't really need to know the angle between the light ray and the surface of the air and the water. We really need to know what is going on with respect to the normal line. Um, we've used that before with normal force and other, in other places. Um, that's going to be our angle of incidence. The angle of refraction here well, as you can see, conceptually, if this was equal to, you know, 40 degrees, uh, this is smaller than that, you know, maybe 30, some 32 degrees or 33 degrees. Um, we can see that the light is bending. If there wasn't any bends, this light ray would stay straight. Um, that's not what happens, though. And one thing we want to talk about here is why. Why does the light do this? And uh, it's a really difficult question in many ways. Let's see if I can help you. Uh, understand that process a little bit. One explanation is, uh, I'll refer to this picture down here in the lower left, has to do with um, wheels on a lawnmower. Okay, I want you to imagine for a moment we have sidewalk and grass. This is like one of those old style uh, two wheeled uh, lawnmowers. And uh, as you're pushing the lawnmower, on the sidewalk, both tires have equal friction between the tire and the sidewalk, and both wheels are rotating at the same rate. What happens though, is when this wheel over here goes onto the grass, we have a different grip, a different friction between the, the tire and uh, the grass. So this wheel starts to spin at a different rate. As a result, this, spiel, this 
this tire spinning slower, this tire spinning faster, causes the lawnmower by its own natural movement to, to bend. And that's one way to try to understand in a really conceptual way uh, why light bends. Okay, here we can see in this picture, these might be wave crests. And uh, this particular ray of light is uh, going one average speed here, another average speed there. And uh, that's giving us a, um, that bending effect. Another example I've seen over the years has to do with what they call Fermat's principle of least time. Uh, I don't need you to remember that terminology, but um, this is the idea, okay? Maybe this will help you to better understand why light does what it does. Uh, the lifeguard is going to try to uh, rescue this person in the water. We all know that you can run on the sand faster than you can swim through the water, right? People can swim pretty fast, but we're better at, at running than we are at swimming. So what this lifeguard should really do to get to this person in the shortest amount of time, knowing that they're faster running on the sand than swimming in the water, is they should take this green dashed line path. That's because it's going to maximize their ability to get to point B as fast as possible. Um, light doesn't have consciousness like a lifeguard does, but it does follow the laws of physics. And uh, as a result, if light was going from a medium one into a medium number two, it's going to end up doing the exact same thing as this lifeguard. And it's going to get from point A to point B as fast as it possibly can. And the way that it achieves that is th through this bending effect. Um, this is a, a nice uh, picture. And uh, I wanted to, to use this picture as a, as a moment uh, or chance uh, to describe something else that's going on with light. Um, one of the pillars of modern physics is that light is a constant. So this seems to be contradictory to what I'm telling you guys about light um, slowing down or traveling slower when it goes from one medium to another. The way I think of it is uh, we have air being less dense than glass. So what happens is in air, there's molecules, uh, light gets absorbed by molecules in the air and then re-emitted kind of like a game of hot potato. Now, because the air is not so dense, um, that absorption and re-emission from molecule to molecule to molecule, it's not hindered very much at all, okay? So we have a speed of light that's really, really near what we see in a vacuum, in air. But when the light ray goes into the glass, the glass is a, a different substance. It's more dense, much more dense than solid. Um, that process of the molecules, I don't know, silicon dioxide molecules, uh, the silicon and oxygen atoms themselves absorbing and then re-emitting, absorbing and then re-emitting, absorbing and then re-emitting, that causes a delay in the average speed of light. So because of that process, it's not that the speed of light itself changes, but because it takes time for that absorption and re-emission to take place, we end up getting a slower average speed, and that's what causes the bending effect. If that doesn't make sense, you can always rely on those other more fundamental ideas like the lawnmower going from the sidewalk to the grass. Uh, nevertheless, I wanted to offer that ex explanation to you and um, hopefully not uh, confuse you, um, but uh, I don't want to uh, you know, miss the chance to explain something that's kind of cool about the way light really works. Okay, next we have this thing called the index of refraction. Let's take a look at what that is and then we're going to get into Snell's Law. So the index of refraction, symbolized by lowercase n, is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in that material. I suppose I should add the word average speed of light, uh, but you get the idea, okay? n, lowercase n, represents index of refraction. Um, the equation form of the index of refraction, it's a ratio, is uh, the speed of light in a vacuum, which is you know 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, divided by the speed of light in that material, the average speed of light. So as I mentioned just a moment ago, if that average speed of light dips, this number will be uh, s smaller than this number, and that's gonna cause you to have a different index of refraction for each individual type of medium. Um, mediums with uh, a high, or is that media? With a high index uh, means high bending effect and a greater slowing of the average speed of light. So, here is the big equation. 
for this lesson. It's called Snell's Law. And um, we have n sub i times the sine of the angle theta i equals n sub r times sine theta r, where in this case, n sub i represents the index of refraction of the incident medium, n sub r, this should be a lowercase n here, represents the index of refraction for the second medium. Sometimes I've seen this written as one and two. Uh, nevertheless, you're getting medium one, medium two, and uh, the index of refraction for the first medium, the index of refraction for the second medium, and then those angles of incidence and angles of refraction uh, respectively, okay? Uh, here's a, a chart of some of the common indices of refraction. Uh, so air, if you take a real careful look here, you'll notice it's very, very close to a perfect 1.00. Um, air is super, super low density, right? It's uh, it's it's kind of mostly empty space, I suppose. And uh, you're getting an index of refraction very, very close to 1.00, which is what it is in a vacuum. Uh, fresh water, uh, 1.33. So that's a popular... Uh, medium that we use in physics, uh, diamonds, uh, you know, allotrope of carbon, super high density, uh, very, very high density. So when when the light waves are absorbed and re-emitted, absorbed and re-emitted, absorbed and re-emitted, you get this uh, really, really large index of refraction. This actually gets into the idea of why diamonds sparkle the way that they do. Uh, without getting too deep into that, uh, you'll notice the more dense or jam-packed something is, uh, the, the larger index of refraction it tends to have. Let's get into a sample problem, and uh, let's go ahead and start over here on the left-hand side. The question would say something like this. If a light ray travels from air into water uh, and the angle of incidence is 30 degrees, what is the angle of refraction for the light ray in the water? Okay, that's the way the question would be phrased. Let's take a quick look here. Um, <clears throat> we can see that this light ray coming in, uh, this is the air side. This is the water side of the problem. Okay, you can imagine this is the surface of the water. Uh, being that this is 30 degrees, uh, it looks like here we've uh, estimated that index of refraction in air to be very nearly perfect to 1.00, although it really should be 1.000293. Uh, you get the point. Uh, this is going to be really close to 1.00. And then here in water, we have 1.33 as the index of refraction. So to set this up, we use Snell's law. So here we could uh, say 1.000293 or 1.00 times the sine of the angle of incidence equals the index of refraction in the second medium multiplied by the sine of that uh, angle of refraction. Um, here's the algebra, and you guys are terrific at algebra, so I don't feel like I need to spend too much time discussing that. One thing I will say is when you're trying to solve for theta, you have to undo the sine um, algebraically with the inverse sine function. So grab your calculator, you inverse sine the left and the right hand side of the equal sign, and uh, here you end up getting the answer to be 22.09 degrees. And yes, the light ray has bent towards the normal line. That is a really interesting and important result. Um, does that make sense? If you go back to some of those previous slides, I think you'll, you'll see that that uh, meshes perfectly with the ideas in those previous slides. This is a really interesting idea. Um, if you were trying to spear fish and you're, you, you're, you've got a spear, you've got the, a fish in the water, the water's clear, um, should you throw the spear where you see the fish knowing that you're in the air and the fish is in the water? Could be you're gonna miss the fish if you spear it, you try to throw your spear right where you see it. Think about that for a moment. Um, turns out there's an optical illusion going on here. The fish is in an actual place that your eye doesn't quite understand in the initial process due to this refraction of light. Um, really cool idea. Let me show you another couple of ideas I think are pretty cool. Uh, every sunset, every sunrise is an illusion as well. Very similar to what we just talked about with the, with the spear fishing. Uh, here we have light going from vacuum into atmosphere. That's going to cause the light to bend. And uh, yeah, the sun isn't exactly where you think it is every sunset, sunrise. Think about that for a moment. Pretty cool illusion that's around us all the time. This is the uh, explanation for a mirage. Um, without getting too uh, in-depth on this, uh, light refracts, causing you to think that something is where it isn't. So usually up here, if you have nice blue clouds, you tend to think there's blue water there. And uh, with time running out here, refracted light that bends towards the normal line has been slowed down. Time's up. Talk to you guys again.